Good morning, America. This is John Killian with J2 for you. A deeper dive on the headlines, and we're going to start off our time together with a little music here from Johnny Cash. I hope it comes in good for you. can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be today and that is a different source of news than Google News or CNN certainly different take a little bit more business oriented and uh, and interesting they are starting their headline story here is Pope Francis is surprising secretive and shrewd um, kind of raised some eyebrows yesterday the Vatican put out some guidelines on cremation and uh, how you should handle the remains uh, saying it's okay to cremate people but you need to bury the remains in one place you can't spread them out over the sea or what have you and it's you know it's another one of these cases where somebody in the Vatican has too much time on their hands I guess and um, do a lot of us who came up in the Catholic faith but moved on you know really need somebody else telling us what to do with the mortal remains of our loved ones you know uh, i don't know that the church has a valid role so this is a story about an 88 year old albanian was watching pope francis on television to his astonishment he heard the pontiff mention his name yes uh, francis announced that the simple white-haired priest had who had spent many years in jail during Albania's communist dictatorship was to become a cardinal. Wow, that's one way to find out. Yes. So cardinals pick the popes and the popes pick the cardinals and that's how the Catholic Church works. Um, the pope kept nearly the entire Vatican hierarchy in the dark about his decision. Sort of an outside outsider to the Vatican 
in the lead position. Uh, trying to reform the church before it becomes uh, caught in, and it may be too late for the, the Roman Catholic faith in Europe and North America, simply because you get into this spiral where the only people left in the room are the hardcore people, and they turn off the people who are like marginally, you know, associated with the church or less than, you know, all in. And, uh, and that group, I think, can be the uh, victim of its own success in getting its way. So he's in a race against time to create a new church, really, that can bring people into the fold. And I don't know how that's going to go. I think most people who have left it have no interest in returning. So a very ancient institution that is uh, rapidly coming undone, I would say. I would say, uh, yeah, I, I don't think they, they can kind of outgrow the, the legacy of the of the, uh, of the, uh, the bad effects of a celibate clergy and that kind of stuff. U.S. rocket hits Islamic State targets in Mosul. Yep. We're definitely in a state of war with uh, ISIL. Um, albeit limited to not a large footprint on the ground and more air assaults. U.S. Rocket City. Uh, okay, Clinton leading among many voter, many young voters, Harvard poll finds. No surprise there. Russia beefs up Baltic fleet amid NATO tensions. Yeah, what's that going to achieve? I don't know. They're trying to flex their muscle, trying to... Uh, I don't know what the goal is there. Putting us on notice not to mess with them. I think this might be posturing, having to do with Syria and the fact that maybe Hillary would want to create a no-fly zone should she become president, which is entirely likely. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts going on in the vacuum filled by the demise of ISIS. Now you have a resurgent Iraqi, you have Turks in Iraq, you have Turks in Syria, and uh, you have Russians flying sorties all over Syria, and uh, it is a crowded place there. So... Then there's this whole matter of the Ukraine and the Crimea. So the Russians have extended themselves militarily into places they weren't before. And I know they had a modest token increase of NATO troops sent into the eastern part of the Eastern Europe. So, yeah, there's a bit of saber rattling going on, a oh, low level feud going on, posturing, I would say, nothing eminently dangerous. Pro immigrant protester snarl New York City morning commute. Hmm. Let's check that out. Protesters holding a pro immigrant sign blocked lanes on the George Washington Bridge. Holy mackerel, briefly halting traffic during the morning rush on the busiest U.S. bridge. Yeah, that's one way to gain attention. I don't know if it wins you any friends. Port Authority of New York said delays were as long as 90 minutes on the bridge's upper level. Ten protesters were arrested. All right, there is quite a bit of uh, customs actions. Uh, there are a lot of people being deported quietly, it would seem, right now, under this Obama administration. Immigration agency oversees thousands of deportations weekly and has deported more than 2 million immigrants under President Barack Obama, more than under any previous administration. 
Pictures posted on social media show protesters clasping a banner that read resist, organized, rise up. I don't think too many of us would have thought that the Obama administration was so uh, vigilant on the whole uh, deportation scene. But apparently, looks can be deceiving. Uh, they're more than willing to deport people. So... Oh, this is the time when Republican Governor Chris Christie is going through a trial for closing down lanes. Not a popular thing to do in New York City. Uh, inmates officer injured during fights at jail in Chicago. Eight inmates and officer were taken to the hospital on Tuesday after they were injured during several fights at a jail in Chicago. Uh, tough job, dangerous job, and uh, I don't want it. Marine pilot ejects from plane, suffers minor injuries. Huh. U.S. Marine Corps fighter jet pilot suffered minor injuries. What else is going on in Reuters? Anything? On, let's take a look at their top five here. Oh, we talked about Russia beefing up Baltic Fleet, Pope Francis, U.S. Rock City, clouds gather in a rooftop solar's biggest u.s market okay here's something important happening on a long-term systemic basis it's the uh, continuing emergence of solar power as an alternative to our current carbon-based approach to powering everything Let's see if i can get it to come up there we go. Clouds gather in rooftop solar's biggest U.S. market. Oh, that sounds like a bad thing, right? For years, the quiet, winding streets of Scripps Ranch neighborhood has been pure gold for solar installers. Thanks to high power prices, hot summers, and large homes to cool, a great share of Scripps Ranch residents have embraced solar power. All right. This is in California. Rooftops of some 2,000 homes, 26% are fitted with panels in Scripps Ranch. Okay. So what are the clouds here? Let's go down. The growth has been rapid. In July 2014, San Diego installer Sullivan Solar put up its first solar system, Scripps Ranch's Pine Castle Street, celebrating with a block party. Pizza and wine paid off. Sullivan installed systems on 11 of 48 homes on the street. If you can afford the upfront, it's a no-brainer. As much as Scripps Ranch symbolizes rooftop solar success, it also illustrates the challenges facing the industry today. After rising 64% in the first half of the year in Scripps Ranch, installations tumbled 50% in July and August combined, according to utility data. Uh, across California, growth has also slowed this year, and in the third quarter, installations dropped year over year. Hmm, surprising. Industry watchers say many factors are at play, including shrinking incentives. Yeah, that'll do it. Weariness of future government actions and consumer fatigue with marketing tactics. Uh, many of the most likely buyers, affluent, environmentally inclined homeowners in sunny places, already have the rooftop systems. That's right. So, Scripture Ranch homeowners. Put up panels will still be able to sell power. They don't use the utility at the same retail rates as those who got it before the cap. But they'll have to pay $100, $200 more per year in fees. Yep. They also eventually will be shifted to new time of use power rates, which could result in lower credits. All right. So, they uh, kind of hitting. Uh, saturation a little bit there. <coughs> incentives are, I've got solar panels on my house. I've used incentives, you know, to make it affordable. It's a good deal. So, 
I don't know. Let's see what this, if you get something. This is just one town. Let's see the sectors. Oh, what's that? What is Sorry, that? I was eating the Milky Way. Gosh, hats. They stink. All right, so I think we're going to move on from Reuters. I didn't see too much there. Let's see, uh, let's see what BBC's got going on. They got an interesting take on things. Russia ships will not refuel in Spain. Russia withdraws a request for warships to refuel in Spain following concern among NATO allies. All right. Well, that's more tension between NATO and Russia. Man, that's a massive, massive ship. They got a picture here of this Russian aircraft carrier. What else is going on here? Um, Afghan green-eyed girl arrested. What in the world? This is the green-eyed girl was from, I believe it was Time or something like that. National Geographic. Famous, famous photo. Afghan woman immortalized on the cover of National Geographic in 1985 as a green-eyed 12-year-old has been arrested in Pakistan. For holding fake identity papers. You could face a fine and up to 14 years in jail. What in the world? Pakistan recently launched a crackdown against fake IDs. Hmm. Pakistan's in rough shape. They are definitely, uh, you know, there's just all kinds of militants that came out of the initial Afghan conflict when the Russians pulled out, uh, when they were forced out really by these CIA armed a bunch of Mujahideen forerunners of the Taliban and you know the Osama bin Laden and those guys and they're still around and they make things miserable for the Pakistanis now. They're the threat to the government and they're, they're paying to India too. They're just basically uh, bunch of very violent people who don't seem to be going anywhere fast. It would take a lot to eradicate them. And they're trying to destabilize a government that has nuclear weapons, so it's no small matter. So, anyhow, human interest story here about Pakistan. And there's a more on Afghanistan. Afghans from Afghanistan's looming refugee disaster. Yeah, what's going on with the Afghan refugees? Why Afghan refugees are facing a humanitarian catastrophe? Hundreds of thousands of Afghan refugees in Europe, Pakistan, and Iran are being forced to return home to Afghanistan by the European Union. Yeah. That presents a problem. What happens when they go back home? I and mean, there's a reason they left, right? An unprecedented humanitarian crisis is likely to be a result of as the refugees, many of them destitute, return to what is effectively a countrywide war zone, with the Taliban attacking half a dozen provinces. Moreover, the country's severe winter March months are approaching. Supplies are even harder to obtain. The government in Kabul does not have the resources to help these refugees or resettle them as it focuses on the war. Okay. The reverse exodus of Pakistan's Afghan refugees. However, alongside that, you see, it says, is at a conference in Brussels, international donors, including the European Union, pledged $15 billion for Afghan's development budget. However, alongside that generosity was a deal in which Afghanistan had to accept the return of over 200,000 Afghan refugees who flooded into Europe last year. Part of the one million immigrants who arrived in Europe. Yeah, they didn't all come from Syria. You know, Afghan and Dan Afghanistan is another place where people are trying to leave in large, large numbers. 
Um, EU is likely to accept many Syrian refugees because it considers Syria a war zone, but the EU does not consider Afghanistan a war zone, even though the country is torn apart by war. So, tough luck for the Afghans, I would say. Yes. Um, you have to feel for them as, you know, fellow human beings. I don't know. 200,000 is a lot to take on. What do you do with all the, these refugees in your country? And There's been a lot of uh, concern about a lot of the... Uh, Afghani men have been implicated in many sexual assault cases and um, so even if the vast majority are perfectly amiable, peace-loving people, their reputation is tarnished and you know, governments don't always paint with a fine brush. So the EU will go to the extent of building a new terminal at Kabul airport to accommodate the arriving refugees. Isn't that nice. Uh, the EU foreign policy chief rejected reports that EU aid to Afghanistan was conditional on the Kabul government accepting back these refugees. Pakistan plans to repatriate 1.6 million registered and another 1 million unregistered Afghan refugees. Whoa, that's a lot. That's 2.6 million people, many of whom have been living in Pakistan since 1979. Whew. Well, that will just completely destabilize that country, I would think. Uh, I don't know what would come of it. They, they've been gone a whole generation. I don't know what kind of connections uh, still remain in their home country. So, here's a country, Afghanistan, that we've kind of staked our claim to. We've put a flag down there. We've sent in a lot of troops through a lot of fighting. And the end result is it's still a mess. It's still got a bunch of people who are desperate to leave it. And there's uh, still the Taliban fighting for power there. And we look a little bit like the Russians did back in 79. We've got this uh, government left behind that can't really defend itself against the Taliban by itself. So we are still hanging around there trying to keep it up and running. Islamabad has given a March 2017 deadline by when all refugees will have to leave. Pakistan military has blamed Afghan refugees for taking part in acts of terrorism. Yes. So, although most suspects captured and shown in the media are Pakistani citizens. Hmm. Without any declaration, the government has geared up its bureaucracy and police to hound out Afghans and send them packing. All right. The UNHCR... Uh, is providing $400 for each registered refugee as a going home package. Okay. Iran with 1 million refugees on its soil is persuading some Afghans to return even as it recruits Afghan Hazaras who are Shia Muslims to fight for the Syrian regime. Fight or die. Fight or go home. thus being used as cannon fodder for the wars in the Middle East. They easily succumb because their futures are uncertain. They lack resources and jobs, while he, Iran promises them Iranian citizenship. Adding to the tragedy is the massive exodus of Afghans from their cities as the Taliban attacked them. At least 24,000 people have fled Kunduz in the north since 3 October. That's the last couple of weeks when the Taliban attacked the city for the second time in a year. As a result of continuous war in the past 15 years, there are already some 300,000 internally displaced Afghans. It's a mess. It's a mess. And 
uh, I don't know that there's anything anyone can do to fix Afghanistan. Um, I don't think there's enough to go around for people. So any government has to, uh, just by necessity, provide just for a f limited proportion of its occupants. And if it tried to provide for everybody, it would just become over, or, you know, it would be unsustainable. The, uh, so you have an overpopulated country, and overpopulated countries tend to... Uh, lead to civil wars and refugees and really there's a lot of hard times and you, you know we wish we didn't have these things and back in 90 I think it was 94 they had them a meeting in Cairo they tried to have a meeting of the Clintons and they're trying to get the world leaders to sign on to some sustainable population practices but the Catholic Church and the um, a lot of the uh, Muslim leadership were against any kind of family planning. Just that's too bad for their followers because every place we have people having you know seven eight children, soon uh, the population outstrips the state's ability to provide for them, and then just. Uh, you know, is democracy possible when there isn't enough to go around? I don't think so. You know, we, we try to spread democracy around the world. Well, you can't do that if, if you know, you have elections and who your leaders aren't going to be able to provide for everyone. So, you get what you get. And I don't know what's going to change people's minds to have a more sustainable population growth pattern so it could very well be that you don't get one you just get this unsustainability and this hard times and it's very unfortunate but you know it's the way of the world perhaps and we uh, have better things to do with our lives than try to fight the way of the world. All right. So, Afghanistan, basket case. What else is going on in BBC? Obama ridiculed on snapshot by daughter. Yeah, I can believe it. I have two daughters myself. Ah, Trump ally says Kelly fascinated by sex. Oof. Newt Gingrich. Well, here's a guy who's a former, another Republican. Former Speaker of the House who seems to have issues with sexuality. Uh, the Republican claimed she showed a bias for mentioning the groping allegations against Donald Trump. Ms. Kelly retorted she was not fascinated by sex, but by who was going to be in the White House. Yeah, that does increase attention on the matter, doesn't it? The fact that you're on the ballot for president. Um, Mr. Trump publicly criticized Ms. Kelly on a number of occasions before she asked about derogatory remarks he had made, including calling women fat pigs. Ah, oh, we've all heard this thing, but it was the mention of the leaked six boast tapes in which the presidential nominee is heard to say he grabbed women by the genitals. Yes. Wonderful. And what's Mr. Gingrich on the Kelly Files on Tuesday? See, the, the former Speaker of the House claimed the media was spending a disproportionate amount of time on the accusation of sexual misconduct, which Mr. Trump has denied. You are fascinated with sex and don't care about public policy, he told the bemused anchor. Yeah, well, you know, that, you know, it's hard to move on from that one, isn't it? Very hard to just 
pretend it's business of you, as usual when you have a candidate with that kind of resume. But we got now less than two weeks to go, so that will be coming to an end soon. Uh, migrants cleared from the jungle camp. Women work 39 days a year more than men. Well, this is something with a likely woman president woman president coming up. I, I think these kinds of issues might get more attention than they have in the past by Washington. Women work on average 50 minutes more a day than men. The report says the prevalence of unpaid work burdens women and estimates that economic inequalities between the sexes could take 170 years to close. Wow. What is that? 170 years? That's quite a prognostication. The gap in economic opportunity is now larger than at any point since 2008. Nearly a quarter of a billion women have entered the global workforce over the past decade. Although men do 34% more paid work than women, women still spend more of their time on unpaid work such as housework, childcare, and care for older people. Yep. I can believe that. Okay, BBC, what else you got for me? Our ideas about swordfish are all wrong. We have wrong myths about swordfish. 